Hello, that's my daughter Hi. Kylie. I knew you would. You would. <laughs> Good evening everybody, this is my birthday dinner with my loved ones. This is my other half, my wife. This is Amina, which everybody knows. That's my baby over there. Morning guys, it's 6.25. Right, this is the only selfie you're going to get of me because I hate them. Look, you can see my mirror where I can see the back of my hair. This is me, Inna. Say hello! This is the Jennifer friends. This is my husband sit in the kitchen. Say hello everyone. Hello everyone. My princess. Hello. Okay, he where's your other sister? It's my bedroom. Hello everyone, this is my Saturday morning. With my girlfriend. Hello, how are you? One, two, three. Yeah. One, two, three. Action. What are they? Hi, my name's Barbara. What's your name? My name is Susan. And what's your name? Good morning. I'm Barbara. Hi. Hi, Barbara. You know, I always want to ask you, where are you from? I'm from the Philippines. Where did you come from? I'm from uh, Pakistan. How many children do you have? Uh, two. Which place you like in UK? My favorite place, I think, is uh, Legoland. Favorite place in London is uh, Oxford Street. Stop! Right? Yeah. I don't know. I can't even see. Nice to see you. So what do you have to be doing in this weather? What are you doing in this weather? <laughs> 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 Barbara, how are you feeling today? Good. Thank you. Naveed, how's it going? I'm fine, thank you. Doing very well. Uh, Reggie, how are sorry you today? Sorry guys, running late on my way. Who's that? Mo. Mo, okay, good. Susan, how are you doing today? Good, great. Great? Yes. Still remember the... I still remember, but the balance was not good. <laughs> But now it's fine. With some help. <laughs> this is our other wonderful workshop facilitator, Rose Fraser. Say hello. Hi, Dita. Hello, hello. Hi, everyone. Look at you, the expert, no. So you all come for entertainment, not for learning, then. <laughs> Say hi, everyone. <laughs> and we've known each other for how long? Since we've known each other for years. Uh, we've summer. known each other since? The summer. Since the summer, yeah. Oh, wow. That's gone by quick. It's gone by Time very flies. quick. Time flies. How did you feel and what did you do when you had your diagnosis of cancer? You talk. Your, your life stops. You know, I ran my own business for 36 years. So within, what, six weeks of being diagnosed and starting chemo, my life started changing straight away. And it's, it's a lot to take in. I tell everyone, because I feel more conf uh, confident if I tell everyone. And because, you know, if you have something bad, like a cancer, everyone talk behind. Maybe that's just the way some people react. 
Maybe some people just don't want to ask because they are worried about themselves, you know, feeling worried yeah, about you. Some people don't feel comfortable to ask. My shock, I turn it like uh, I need to act very right. quick. And I said, okay, when can you take it out? When can I stop the chemo? When can, and I have a loads of questions. And then I think 26th of January, my, my chemo started. It's a word. Hmm. Oh my God. Am I going to see me grandkids grow up? Am I going to, you know, like all these mixed feelings go through your mind. The consultant told me I had cancer. So I thought, it's like, so how long do I have? Which I, I mean, I asked. And I've seen some people, you know, survive it, survive it anyway. The only thing is, when I think of the three people who had cancer that I've, I've seen them take their last breath, you know, because I was there in those three circumstances. So, hmm. Well, at least they all had a good life anyway, and I've had a good life. So... How are you now? I'm, oh, I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm positive. Yeah. Sometimes you get this negative. Oh, of course you do. Negative thoughts, right? Huh? Hi, Regina. Hi, Bums. You okay, hon? Yeah, I'm okay. Thank you. Right, I've got a question to ask you. If what question would you ask your family? about you having cancer? I, honestly, I don't really know, because when I even, when I found out I had cancer, I didn't even tell my family, because I had, I sort of just kept it to myself. Would they, do they feel that they can manage without me? And um, in terms of financially, and will, will they keep the family together? And will they look after each other and love each other? I have to hide what I'm feeling. Because uh, it's like telling me to just move on, stop, stop, and just, you know, don't worry about it. But they don't realize really what you feel. No, they don't. It's hard to talk to them because they must think, oh, well, you know, if mum's got cancer, what's going to happen? What's the future? So it's quite a difficult one to process, really. Um, it's really hard because although they stuck with me through thick and thin, and one of my sons used to come to chemo, just by looking at him, you could see in his eyes that he was heartbroken and, and it just gets you there. If I'm asking, I'm asking if be good if I'm not survive. Will they manage? Yeah, mm. if they manage uh, without me. But uh, it's very hard question. Yeah, it's very hard question, I think. And even I'm not asking you. Yeah. <laughs> We'll see what we have here. Okay. What helps you cope? Me prayer. To cope, I pray. I live each moment in time, and that's how I cope. And I just take one day at a time because what can you do? And family, they're brilliant. For me, I'm so proud for my family. It's like I have a very nice uh, husband they who help helped me a lot. Me a lot. What helping you <laughs> to be cope? Since, since I have uh, this problem, I never ask. I just ask why. I never ask why me. Never. Never. Because if I don't like to me, I don't like for others. True. Yeah. Like yesterday, my diagnosis is not good. I need to do more exams to change the treatment. Since yesterday, I feel Lost. A little bit bad. Right. Yeah, but I'm strong. 
Okay. Yeah, I cried yesterday. I said, I'm not going home. I'm going to Macmillan. I can't come home, you know. I you cry. I cried to with the lady. I said to her, I'm not going home She's today. I want to cry here because I'm live alone. I, when the two hours later I, I left came from Macmillan, upstairs, she's still yeah. crying there. I said, no, come with me. Right. <laughs> I left in Macmillan. Yeah, just, but I'm feel good. Today, I wake up. I said, Regina. thank you, God, for today. Yeah. Hello, friends. I'm not happy with the results. But everything's okay. I'm not happy, but it's a life. Uh, I don't know. What can I say? Just. I just say thank you. Thank you for everything. Thank you for. For meeting all of you. And I sent to you the writings the doctor did. Anyway, bye bye for everyone. Okay, Ina, you just arrived. Uh, yeah, I'm coming. Uh, you to just the check in? Yeah, I'll already check in. I'm waiting for my appointment to see the doctor. I know you are a fighter, but still a little bit... Busy. Yeah, I'm a little bit worried now. It's like, because, you know, when you're waiting, um, it's, it's maybe uh, the worst uh, in the life when you're waiting something. Yes, I agree with you. Waiting is the worst time in your yeah, life. Yeah, 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 yeah. Hi everyone, uh, I just uh, want to discuss with you about my treatment. I am suffering one of the rare form of cancer, rare heart cancer, and one in the million. And I'm the only person in the, at the moment in the London. At the moment, I'm waiting for my treatment. NHS have a decision no, of story is too expensive, is very costly for this person, so we're not giving him. I should get used to this, but no, I'm <laughs> afraid never... of needles as well. <laughs> I hate needles as well. I'm on my way to the hospital. Just thought I'd sit here just for five minutes, just to sort of sit and think and go over what's what. The imaging, I believe, is on the first floor, or maybe the second. But every time I come here, my heart skips a beat. I do, however, love these stairs, they're fabulous. Right, here we go. Okay, Barbara, do you want to come through? Thank you. Right, guys, it's my second mammogram since I was diagnosed with breast cancer. Please God, it's okay. And just by getting yourself checked out when you get an appointment, it can really save your life. How has it been talking to friend and family? Okay. So I start first. <coughs> oh, no okay. It's uh, hard to explain someone uh, uh, about cancer, you know. Very, very hard to explain. Uh, for example, I just visited 22nd of uh, this month, two days ago, to oncologist. When I came back, I was 100% thinking, I'm gonna get treatment. And um, when I came back, my both son said, what happened, dad? I said, no. So they both keep quiet, you know, pin drop silent like this. And when I look their face, I get upset. I was uh, positive that moment, but I went upstairs, you know, I didn't, because it's very um, hard to explain them. They, they think our dad is going through pain. He got fatigue, tiredness, suddenly, and uh, he need treatment now, so what's happening now? This is my family I'm talking about. Out of family, uh, you can't explain anybody. No word, because that's why I'm, uh, I have a limited uh, friends now. No limited, no friends, mean, be honest. When um, my daughter uh, 
find out yesterday, you guys coming, my friends coming. This. She said, you don't have a friend long, since a long time ago because I changed on my life. Last year, the doctor said I need the operation. I did the operation last year. I didn't tell anyone just on the day before my operation. Everyone felt angry. Why, why you just tell? So I said, oh, I don't know. And this year I'm doing again the same. But I tell to them last year, I, I say sorry, but if it happens something bad again, I will do the same, I tell them. Because if I tell to them, they stay on me all the time. Don't leave me brief, yeah? Sometimes you need uh, space, you know, from yourself, from your problems. Just you relax that moment, you know? Yeah. Well, during the treatment, my friends and family were really supportive. But two years on, I mean, some of them, you know, sort of changed. Yes. Yeah. Probably the attitude that she's okay now. Yes. But you're not really, you never will be, do you? No. I mean, no. yeah, you sort of put on this, yeah, I'm fine. Yeah. But there are things that go through your mind all the time. Yeah, and the thing is, I'm... Some, that's a lot of things I just keep to myself. This is uh, my room, my living room where I spend the time, most of time. It is very disappointing for me. To, uh, I'm off the work nearly a year now and uh, just uh, sitting home waiting for my treatment and uh, it is very, very hard. Financially you go down, emotionally you can't stop your thinking, you know, overthinking. My children, they are studying, they're not with me. And I'm myself at home all the time, just uh, reading book, sitting home, and uh, which is very, very uh, painful for me. Hi guys, before I start my treatment, I cut my hair. The first treatment not working, I start my chemo, that's my peak line. Hi guys, it's me, just to let you all know that I got the all clear when I went up for my mammogram. I've still got lymphedemia, which is a pain in the butt. But look at this sky, it's fabulous, isn't it? Are there any positive sides to having cancer? <laughs> what? You, you find out who your friends and family are. And that's a good one, actually. Yeah. <laughs> I don't have to shave my leg ever again. <laughs> yes, I do. Because... But doesn't it go back? Huh? No. Oh, it doesn't? No. Oh, okay. No, it has back. not. Because I took my limb nerve and so on, and I don't sweat there. So that's the positive, positive <laughs> that's side for really me. Good. <laughs> yeah. That's a good one. You discover yourself. Because we, the way we grew up, very restricted yeah. Muslim family, very strict. That's why I said, you know, I strike back. I said, no, one life. So what I feel, I do it with my family and wife and daughter. Yeah. Because what I want to give to my children, if I passed away, they say, oh, he was a good man. You know, he didn't stop us. Thank you. 
Some suddenly you go every month is different, you know. But I'm still positive. Yes. I'm. Uh, I, I have to do fight, you know. Still because I have a beautiful wife, you know. Yeah. So I am still positive. Two options: one fight, other one you can give up. Jago, say hello to the camera. Sorry, I missed your. I missed your. Fine, fine. Oh, it's okay. Good. Hello, darling. How are you doing? You're right. Looking good. Yeah, but just voice. You see, the still is not good. Better. Yes, much better. This is like a very comfortable, you know. I can share with you things I can't share with outside. When I was have the temperature and I'm thinking, oh, come on, why? With me, blah blah blah, but it's like no, you know. I uh, first what I'm thinking is that Navid, Navid said always, you must fight, be a fighter, be a fighter. <laughs> you don't feel that you're being judged. We've had a good laugh. And I uh, so upset when I'm not going to the your place to see you. The last time when you all together, yeah. oh, it's for me. It's like terrible. We miss you. Uh, I miss you so much. It's like we're another family, and we all sort of understand each other because of what we are experiencing or we've experienced, and it's it's really good. It's like it's like they're another family to me. I mean, you. 